hey guys, so a perfect example just happened and um, after the message that was given in church this morning on um, the book of Nehemiah and how how Nehemiah was um, was seeing that his people were being abused. Um, so Nehemiah was seeing his people were being abused, that taxes were owed, and so that children, I'm driving, but I am not touching my phone. My daughter is holding it just for anybody out there who might be concerned. Turn it a little that way. So anyway, it's dark, but my daughter's holding my phone so I could do this video quickly. So perfect example for my pastor who I just found out today follows my Patriot page. Hi, pastor. Um, so in our conversation today, we discussed how Nehemiah was standing up to the priests and the leaders because there was taxation going on on the land. And when the people couldn't pay it, their daughters and their sons were being taken as slaves. And Nehemiah held, well, first he met privately with these people and then he held a public meeting and he called these people out. And when I spoke to my pastor this morning, because it was all seeming like it was only applicable to other countries, like this isn't something that happens here in the United States. And I said to him, um, do you understand that there are slaves in the United States, that our jail system is a business, that if beds are empty, the business does not make money. And he said, well, my understanding of jails, turn it a little Sorry. bit, that's okay, thank you, hon. So he says, my understanding of jails is if people are you know, breaking the law, they end up in jail and then they get due process and they stay the amount of time they're supposed to stay and then they're released. So the situation that we have right now going on down at the jail with Ammon and, um, and his daughter Hallie and Lisa and Sarah, they're all down there. Uh, so this message, I guess, is kind of for my pastor. <laughs> So, Pastor, today you spoke on the abuse of power and how um, that oppression was any what came to people when there was any form of power that was being used in a selfish way to abuse the people. And so I'm going to explain the situation that's happening in the jail to you, and I want you to answer this for me if we have oppression in the United States. So a 14-year-old girl travels in from out of town to see her father who's been wrongfully incarcerated since January 26th. Denied bail, has received cruel and unusual punishment, is not receiving any of, of the rights that he supposedly has until he's uh, pr convicted guilty, if he's conv convicted guilty. So she travels in with her mom and her family to see her father. She gets to the jail and the gal who is a fairly nice gal, she's always down there, but she really doesn't have a whole lot of backbone. And sometimes it seems like she just wants to quietly use her authority, um, maybe to oppress people. Um, very quiet gal. She has told them that they are not allowed to see Ammon without uh, Hallie's birth certificate. And so she actually gave them the rules which they read and it said that they needed to have a copy of the birth certificate. So they have the family uh, text and um, send over a picture on their phone of the birth certificate. The gal says that's not good enough and I've spoken to uh, Sergeant Parks and he said that it's not good enough and she won't be seeing Ammon tonight. So Sarah reads the, the paper with the directions and it says that um, it says that a copy is needed. So she says, okay, if I go down to FedEx right now, <clears throat> visitation, as long as you get in before nine o'clock, you can, you can get in there for the 915 or the 930 visitation. So Sarah says, if I go to FedEx right now and I have them print me off a copy of this picture of her birth certificate, will you let her see her father? She has not seen him since before he was arrested because it's too difficult on the children to see their father behind a, a glass window. So the gal says to her, no, even with a copy, you won't be able to see him because it has to be an original. Okay, Pastor Michael, listen to me. This morning you said that oppression occurs when people use their power to basically um, take away the rights of other people, to mistreat other people. So Sarah reads again the form 
which says that a copy is needed, not original, but a copy. But the police officer tells her, unless you have the original, your daughter will not, Ammon's daughter will not get in to see her. This is something very, very small in comparison to much of the abuse that's going on right now in the jail system. Very small. Okay, we're talking about a visitation and there's some people who are spending years in jail wrongfully convicted because the government has a grudge against them or they want to make more money. However, is it something you can see that it is oppression happening from the people with the guns and the badges when they're supposed to uphold their oath to the Constitution, protect the people's rights, and follow their own rules? And in their own rules, it states that a copy of a birth certificate is needed. They are now producing that copy and they're being told, or they were 10 minutes ago, that it was too late to do this tonight and they just weren't going to do it, that she was not going to see him. This is oppression when people take their power and they use it to abuse the people. Because in this, con in this situation, they're doing exactly what the rules are, and they're still being bullied by the people with the badges and the guns. This is a 14-year-old little girl who has not seen her father all year. I've gone down there long enough to know there are times that they bend the rules, there's times that they break the rules, there's times that they completely ignore the rules, there's times they make up their own rules as they go. This is oppression in the smallest form. This makes people mad at the governing authorities over us. You might not think this is a big deal, or you might think that, well, it's our government, we have to follow the rules. So if that's the case, then tell me, why won't you submit to the rules of other countries that allow slavery or sex trafficking? Why won't you allow that to be? If it's, if it's all about obeying your governing authorities and they can make up whatever rules they want, whether they are positive rules or negative rules. Like tonight, they're making up the rules as they go and they're abusing the American people. Why can you not submit to other countries and their rules? Why do you say it's awful what's happening? We need to stand up. We need to help them. We need to pray for them. We need to send them money or resources. We need to go be missionaries because in these other countries, they're, they have slaves and they're abusing the people. Look, if those, if it's their governing authorities that have made that rule, then, then why wouldn't we move there and just accept it that these things are okay? Because after all, we are to submit to the governing authorities. You see, at the end of the day, it's not just that you want us to submit to our governing authorities. In, in all situations, you want us to submit to the governing authorities here in our country because that's where it impacts you. But you're okay having us not submit and stand up and fight against sex trafficking and slavery in other countries. See, that's just hypocrisy if you ask me. We are to follow God's law. God's law says to love your neighbor as yourself. And in doing so, you fulfill all the laws. So I don't care if this government says something is right or wrong or another government says. If it goes against God's law, it's wrong. It's wrong. And so I'm, I'm hoping that you'll listen to this and that maybe you'll just take the simple situation where you see that are all police officers bad? No, but if the, if the good police officers aren't doing anything to stop the bad ones, then they're not good police officers because a good police officer who protects the people and defends their rights would let this little girl go in and see her father tonight. That's what he would do. That's what a good police officer would do. He wouldn't oppress the people. They wouldn't overuse their, their power and their authority to abuse the good people of this country. So in this situation, there is oppression happening at the jail right now. Laws are not, rules are not being upheld by the very people that we pay to uphold the rules. So we're heading down to the jail now. I'm hoping now that um, Sarah was able to get a hold of Sergeant Peterson, who uh, supposedly was going to be approving this, and now there's going to be a little bit of a battle between the front desk police officers and Sergeant Peterson. So let's pray that that they um, that they follow their own rules, 
that they allow this copy of the birth certificate to be enough because that is what the rules say and all they're gonna do is enrage and upset a whole lot of people and prove and prove what absolute criminals they are if they continue making their own rules and playing by this game of my sword's bigger than your sword so I'm gonna do whatever I want so if anybody wants to meet us down at the jail until I hear back from Sarah I'm just gonna keep heading down there doors are open until 9 visitation you can get in before 9 so we still have time to hopefully make some phone calls down to the jail and make sure that Hallie gets in to see her dad um, to the police officers that are watching this, stop abusing the American people. Honor your oath to the Constitution, protect the people's rights, and let's get off this power trip of my sword's bigger than yours so I can do whatever I want. Thanks, guys.